Before I start, I like to welcome a brother who went through a very serious and heavy surgery, Hajj Khalil, Hajj Ibrahim. Alhamdulillah, Allah salamati is in Salat al Jum'a after a long, long time, and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Shifa al Kamil, Al Ajil Lahu, inshaAllah. The concept of Al Intidar was the topic of our discussion last week. And the fact that intidar is energizing hope in humanity. And when there is hope, there is motivation. There is hope, there is power. There is energy, there is light, there is life when there is hope. A life without hope is miserable, is depressive and destructive. We have moments in our daily life that we may go through fear and frustration and hopelessness. And especially because of technology and social network, we are able to observe the suffering of humanity. We can see those people الَّذِينَ يُحَارِبُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَسْعَوْنَ فِي الْعَرْضِ فَسَادًا Those who declare war against God, His Messenger and His Message. And these atrocities exercise on their name of Allah. The people who are supposed to be Khalifatun fil Ard, deputy of divine on this planet. But they chose to be Kalanambalum Adal. We like animals, even wolves. And now these days this tragedy that hurts every heart is going on in, in Iraq. Whether under the Daesh terrorist organization or other Arab Union, other criminals. They consider themselves part of this Ummah. But they are destroying this Ummah. How this Ummah can be Khayr Ummah? How this Ummah can be Ummah al wasata Ummatan Wahida, one Ummah, the best Ummah, the moderate Ummah, with having such a barbaric groups claiming the title of this Ummah. Somebody put the battle of Iraq in this sentence: "Inna al-Ma'arikat bil-Araq hiya bayna tayar يريد الوحدة والحوار بين مختلف مكونات الوطن العربي وبين من يسعى إلى تقسيم تقسيم الوطن ولغته القتل والانحطاط والتكفير والتفجير المعركة بين العزة والاقتدار وبين الجهل والاستعمار I think this is a good definition of describing this battle in Iraq between the forces of darkness and forces loyal to their country and to the unity of their nation. Sometimes you're surprised that what happened that these drone strikes that happen almost every day in, in Yemen and Pakistan, and even the Pakistani government is against it, but our government keep doing it regardless. While in Iraq, almost a month, the Prime Minister of Iraq is begging the United States to do such a thing against Daesh and terrorist organizations that they are committing thousand times more crime in Iraq than what they are doing in Pakistan and Yemen. What we don't see drone strikes 
on the positions of Daesh, at least so far, in Iraq. And then you wonder what kind of politics, who is fighting whom, and who is supporting whom. Our message to the Iraqi brothers and sisters is to be united, to finish this fighting and to win against the Daesh and other terrorists, to be able to bring them to justice and to solve their political conflicts through dialogue, vote and election as they have been doing it so far but some people don't like the result and they never end. Also, we tell everyone, as I said to Press TV, it was yesterday or day before yesterday that they were talking with me, that the nature of this battle in Iraq is not sectarian, it's, the essence is not Shia Sunni, although they are using this excuse, and whenever they don't have this excuse, like in Libya or in Egypt, they do something else to create mess, but now it's easier in Iraq to just say Shia and Sunni. Also, we tell our brothers and sisters that never lose your hope, that life is about hope. I have seen people who are going through cancer, stage number four in cancer. When I visit them in their houses or in their hospitals, they still have hope because this is the way that Allah has wired our system, our brain system, our soul system. He designed us this world that we always have hope in our heart and we always have hope in miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, La Taqnatu Min Rahmatillah He is showing His mercy and His love to His people in different ways. We need to be hopeful but at the same time be patient. If you open our hearts and our minds and choose the language of hope, to speak hope, and to act hope and to be agents of hope. Sometimes hope is not something to explain, it is something to experience, it is something to feel. And the Quran gives us this model, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Yes, it does hurt our heart to see innocent people are massacred with total hate and humiliation. They humiliate them in a worse way and then they kill them. It does hurt. It does hurt to see now people, like 500,000 people just from Mosul, they had to flee their land and their city under this 110, 115 degree. At this time now, you and I, we are in this 73 degree probably, but we are under air condition. <coughs> and you can compare 72, 73 to 115 degree in Baghdad or even warmer in some other areas. And then these people without food and without water and no security. Your health and your security. So this is the gift that we have and unfortunately they lack. But still don't lose your hope. I remember the first day that the Saddam's forces attacked Iran and I was in Tehran and we could hear the explosion at the airport international airport in, in Tehran and everybody was scared Allah Yarhamu Imam Quddus Sirru Imam Khomeini he, he said that this is one of the manifestation of grace of God min al-taf al-khafiyya 
we didn't understand at that time that how come war and destruction be lutf khafi min Allah, secret grace of Allah. And it continued for eight years. More than one million people either killed or got handicapped. Very tragic. But that made that nation extremely strong and independent. Sometimes you have to pay the price. So we have to be hopeful. But hope, my beloved brothers and sisters, doesn't mean to be wishy-washy and just hope of imagination and you know, thoughtless wish. The real hope is the one that makes us more determined and more disciplined, more organized and more mobilized and more active. You cannot have hope to become a doctor, but sitting in your house and doing nothing, not to go to a school and not to go through the suffering of studies. Just you want to become a pharmacist or you want to become a big business person by doing nothing and just hope that this happens. That is not hope. This, that is wishy-washy thinking. The real hope, the real meaning of being an agent of hope and being an angel of hope is to, of course, to think positive and to talk positive, and to act positive. is a combination of intention and expression of an action. This is the real, the real hope. In this humble house of wisdom, we try to be an organization of hope. We try to be agent of, of hope. We are humble, we don't get so much donation and income at the center, but the services are maximum, as you know. We consider ourselves at this mosque like an emergency hospital. When you go to emergency, the emergency is not supposed to reject you and say, no, don't come in. Even if you don't have insurance, you have to be admitted. Now, the details can be discussed, how much emergency can help. But the fact is to be open to everyone, to, to listen and to read and to learn and to interact and to participate and to bring hope through all these approaches and bring happiness. So this is a duty of every individual as faithful. If we are faithful, we must be an agent of hope, an angel of hope. Sometimes people irresponsibly, instead of thinking positively and talking positively, they even add salt to the injury. You know, all of a sudden say, where is this money is going? Which money are you talking about? I'm talking about $200 that, you know, collected from House of Wisdom, and uh, then you have to deal with almost uh, 25, 30 staff as full-time or part-time or uh, workers or office or the school, and so on and so forth, and, and running an organization and sometimes, you know, people don't come to the masjid and then they say, you know, the masjid. I, I cannot talk for other masjid. Every masjid should be responsible. But if I want to talk about this one, I hear these statements from people who never even come. And they never pay either to this masjid or any other masjid. But they talk more than anyone else. And instead of being part of the solution and coming and helping and bringing hope, they add salt to this injury and hurting instead of hoping. They bring more harmfulness than hope that Quran said, not talk from Allah. If you don't have information, don't judge. Don't judge based on assumption 
based on ignorance. If you want to be just, first of all, understand the meaning of fairness and justice, and then have enough knowledge and information if you want to open your mouth and making statement. So we try to be agents of hope and be an emergency to help everyone because the hospital deals with health care in a physical way. We deal with health care in a spiritual, although we try in even in physical, our doctors been last few weeks available after the Salat to answer the health questions. So that means that the mosque also cares about physical health care. You, you see the food is outside and vegetable and fruit and food for, for the poor now for, so for last month. That is not really the, the mosque mission to provide physical food, but a spiritual food. But also if masjid can participate in the service, in physical services, that's something that we, we try to do and we are doing. And we never get tired by doing service. We never get tired to tell the truth. We never get tired to do what is right. We never get tired to stand against injustice and wrongdoing. This is our duty that be available. People come to our office, spend hours talking about their personal, family, community issues. They come with confusion. They live with clearance. They are confused when they come. They are clear and comfortable when they leave. This is the meaning of providing hope and providing motivation and providing energy. Again, hope is not just imagination. It is about action, to do something, to provide something. I like this statement from Thomas Edison that he said, vision without execution is hallucination. If somebody want to have vision, but no action, just a visionary, hopeful, beautiful, you know, look at the horizon in just, you know, funny way and exciting way, but there's no action that support that vision and support that hope, then that is hallucination and just means, means nothing. So to read, to listen, to enter, interact and to respond to the needs of our community. This is the real hope. One thing that I want to ask from you brothers and sisters is so simple. If you were in Karbala and Najaf, the Imam would ask you to take arm and go and fight Daesh. This is scary, isn't it? That you know you have to go to war and that weather. But uh, we don't have Daesh here. Or if we have Daesh, they are scared to say it because there is FBI and there is a system and you know the the rule of law in this country. So even if there are Daesh in America, they are silent. This is why they go there to show they are Daesh. They don't. They can do it here. But the thing that you can do and having this security really is a gift. The fact that you are here sitting in, under this air condition on Friday and listening to a khutbah in a peaceful way, consider that a big blessing. Consider this as a big gift and use it and appreciate it. One thing you can do about that is that next week, and as we are approaching the holy month of Ramadan, Try to bring one more individual with you to Salat al Jum'ah. Remember what the Holy Prophet said to Amir al Mu'mini alayhi salam, Wallahi la an yahdi allahu bika rajulan wahidan, khayrun laka min an yakuna laka humrun na'am. Ya Ali, if you can guide one individual, if Allah chooses you and as instrument of guiding one individual, is better than all this material for you. 
can you guide one individual from your family, your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, your son, your daughter, bring one more person to Salat. And especially as we are getting closer to Ramadan, when you come to prayer, <coughs> prayer is hope, prayer is energy, prayer is connection. Not only connection with Allah, but connecting to one another. That you see your brothers and sisters in your faith and you get stronger as a community. If you can take one more step and become a member, a volunteer. How come that I met just last week with uh, a group of non-Muslims coming from all over? They said, Terry Jones came here for hate. We came here for love and compassion to help this community. Can't we do the same thing? Can we promote the culture of volunteerism? Do something for the masjid. Ramadan is coming when we need volunteers for the services every night, whether for iftar, for service, for welcoming, for cleaning, for doing the service in more powerful way. If you can put your name there and you say, I can come the entire month, or I can come for 10 nights, or I can come for five nights, and especially the services start before the Salah, the 7.30 from next Saturday. So that is something that you can do. Or if you don't have time, but you can financially help all these services and bring so much hope and service to this society through your financial support, you can do that as well. That I take care of one night of Ramadan for the iftar or for service and for the activities to support my faith and to support my, my community. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our brothers and sisters in Iraq, our brothers and sisters in Syria, in everywhere, in, in Lebanon, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, in everywhere there are oppressed, there are people who are suffering and we say to the Iraqi community and the Muslim community in general, we are all one family. It doesn't matter the nationality and color and class. We are one family of faith. Allah yusabbirukum ma'anat kabira jiddan. So much pain. When I see certain things on YouTube, I'm, I feel I'm paralyzed. I can continue to watch I can't, it is too much, too much. No animal in, in this planet, even in the jungle, when the law of jungle is operating, they don't operate this way. I mean, the animals, if they are hungry, that they may have one target, and that's it. And they go to sleep till again they are hungry, but it is only human greed and selfishness and ego and arrogance and taifiya and evil and shaitan that take humanity to asfal al-safli. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهَ أَمْوَاتٍ أَمْوَاتًا بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ There is going to be a day that this tyranny, this terrorism, this bloodshed, this backwardness, will end. And this is why Imam Musa al-Qadim alayhi salam said, Sayyat al-Thani Ashar, minna yusahilu lahu kulla asirin, wa yudhallilu lahu kulla sa'ab, wa yadharu lahu kunuz al-arq, wa yugarribu lahu kulla ba'idin, wa yubiru bihi kulla jabbarin anid, wa yuhliku ala yadihi kulla shaytanin marid. Allahumma ajjil li waliyika al-faraj wa al-nasr, اللهم أرنا التلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس وإلى الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الحشر والمنكر السلام